Welcome back. This is part one of my teaching video on chapter one data collection. Let's have a look at the key facts. Population is a whole set of items that are of interest. Information obtained from a population is known as raw data. A census measures or observes every member of a population. The advantage of using a census is that the results should be completely accurate. Every member of the population is considered. The disadvantages of using a census are, number one, it is time consuming, number two, it is expensive. The advantages of using a sample, on the other hand, are, number one, it is less time consuming, number two, it is cheaper. The disadvantage of using a sample is that the data may not be accurate. We might be looking at a small sample. Individual units of a population are known as sampling units. A list of the sampling units is called the sampling frame. So, if we have a class of 30 students, the individual students are called the sampling units and a list of students, or you could say the register, is called the sampling frame. Ladies and gents, I am now going to go through random sampling techniques. So, we have random sampling. There are three types of random sampling. Number one, simple random sampling. Number two, systematic sampling. And number three, stratified sampling. Let's have a look at the definition of simple random sampling. A simple random sample of size n is one where every sample of size n has an equal chance of being selected. The advantages of using a simple random sampling technique are, number one, free of bias, number two, easy and cheap. The disadvantages of using a simple random sampling technique are, number one, not suitable for large samples, number two, sampling frame needed. Moving on to systematic sampling, let's have a look at the definition. The required elements are chosen at regular intervals from an ordered list. The advantages of using a systematic sampling technique are number one, simple and quick to use, number two, suitable for large samples. The disadvantages of using a systematic sampling technique are number one, a sampling frame is needed, number two, bias introduced if sampling frame is not random. Moving on to the third and final random sampling technique called the stratified sampling. Let's have a look at the definition. The population is divided into mutually exclusive strata and a random sample is taken from each. So stratas are groups, so we could have groups by age, groups by gender and so on. The advantage of using a stratified sampling technique is that the sample accurately reflects the population. The disadvantage of using a stratified sampling technique is that the population must be clearly classified into distinct strata. This might be time consuming. Moving on to non-random sampling techniques. So we have non-random sampling. There are two types of non-random sampling. The first one is called the quota sampling. The second one is called the opportunity sampling. Let's have a look at the definition of quota sampling. An interviewer or researcher selects a sample that reflects the characteristics of the whole population. The advantages of using the quota sampling technique are, number one, no sampling frame needed. Number two, it is efficient. Number three, it is cheap. The disadvantages of using the quota sampling technique are number one, population must be divided into groups which can be costly and it also can be time consuming. Number two, can introduce bias. Moving on to opportunity sampling. Let's have a look at the definition. Sample is taken from people who are available at the time of study and who fits the criteria you are looking for. The advantages of using the opportunity sampling technique are number one, easy to carry out. Number two, cheap. The disadvantage of using the opportunity sampling technique is that it is unlikely to provide a representative result. Now, the final thing that I'm going to cover is types of data. So data associated with numerical observations are called quantitative data. Data associated with non-numerical observations are called qualitative data. So for example, quantitative data could be data on height. Qualitative data could be data about hair color. A variable that can take any value in a given range is called a continuous variable. A variable that can only take specific values is called a discrete variable. So an example of a continuous variable could be the height. And an example of discrete variable could be the number of students in a class. You'll have a fixed number of students. That there, ladies and gents, completes part one of my teaching video on chapter one, data collection. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.